Hey, look, there's a lot of people who uh, got really upset when uh, Chris Christie said this back in, uh, when did he say this? When was it he said this? This was in May. I in May. Believe. Yeah. A lot of people were upset at Chris Christie for, for saying these comments. I'm going to play this. Of course, everybody wants to save every life they can. But the question is, towards what end ultimately? Are there ways that we can thread the middle here to allow there, that there are going to be deaths? And they're going to be deaths no matter what. And if we can do things to keep people in the mode of wearing masks, of wearing gloves, of, of you know, distancing where appropriate, we've got to let some of these folks get back to work because if we don't, um, we're going to destroy the American way of life in these families. And it will be years and years before we can recover. Now, of course, you'll note that he said, look, there's going to be some deaths. It's going to happen. It's no big deal. It's just it's it's inevitable. It's like the sun rising and the moon um, and the sun falling and then the moon coming up. And all we need to do is wear masks and we'll be fine. Now, of course, uh, Chris Christie didn't follow his own advice. Now he's ill. Um, he supposedly checked into a hospital. Now, we have multiple stories of, of people who have attempted to go into the hospital. They have no insurance or whatnot. These are all anecdotal, but you hear about them on Twitter. Here's uh, Chris Christie. He decided, just as an abundance of caution, huh? That doesn't sound, he doesn't sound as sort of like, um, as resigned as he did when he said, people are just going to die. And there's nothing we oh, can do about it. It didn't mean him. Well, for, I mean, for a guy who was just like that, you would think, right? And he just said, oh, put it, keep it back up. Sorry. Um, when we get uh, Kyle's new system, hopefully we'll be able to get this like in one uh, quadrant, right? In consultation with my doctors. <laughs> I'm sure the doctors were like, hey, you should really check yourself in. As opposed to like him calling up and going like, I, I, get me inside there now. I checked myself into a Morristown Medical Center this afternoon while I'm feeling good and only have mild symptoms. Due to my history of asthma, we decided this is an important precautionary measure. You know what's interesting? Um, there's no way you would have ever had him suggest that people do this back when he was saying people are going to die. He would have said, that's ridiculous. That's absurd. We can't, we can't afford to do that. People have got to get out there and tough it out. But when it comes time for him, there's no, there is no situation where unless you are severely ill, I don't care whether you have asthma or not, you can just check yourself into the hospital. That is not afforded to the average person. Yet there are people whose doctors said they needed to go to the hospital and their insurance companies turned them down or the hospital turned them away. And, and those doctors are saying it because they're already ill. They, like the idea of like, look, I've got it. I've got COVID. I just want to go into the hospital. Well, do you have a fever? Oh, no, I, just, I have very mild symptoms. Okay, well, then you'll wait. There is no scenario where it's like, no, actually, I'm going to check myself in now. That's, that, that's what's going to happen. Same guy, too, is being reported now that apparently Chris Christie told Donald Trump to keep interrupting Joe Biden because it's hard for people with stutters to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. You know, I, uh, I, I tend to be um, atheistic. I mean, I think I'm probably a little more religious than I am. Someone who believes in God. And I don't even believe in the notion of people getting what they deserve. I just don't think that happens in life in any way. I'm not a big uh, believer in karma or I just, I just think a lot of this stuff is random, but sometimes things work out in a way that feel like there's poetic justice. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that this is necessarily one of those times. <laughs> The same way one of the doctors, that Dr. Conley said at one point, I think the quote is, I don't know, I tweeted it. The quote was, he said, um, 
they, they sort of like caught him uh, in, in, in saying something about uh, the, the president. Hold on, let me see what it was. This is actually pretty funny. He said, um, we didn't want to do this. Uh, we were afraid that it may be, um, you know, not necessarily here. I'll, let me quote this for you. This is, um, this is what the doctor said. We came off as we were trying to hide something. This is about the oxygen, uh, which wasn't necessarily true. <laughs> and so let me just say that any type of schadenfreude, it's not schadenfreude because that's your friends, right? Any type of, uh, of sense that like there is poetic justice um, that exists when someone like Chris, Car uh, uh, Chris Krischke goes into, um, into the hospital, I just want to say that's not necessarily, I'm not necessarily talking about this instance. I think schadenfreude works. But I thought schadenfreude was about like when, you, when you're, you're happy about something that happens, uh, bad that happens to your friends. It doesn't have to be your friends. Is that not right? Yeah, no. It's just yeah, no. someone else's, someone else's misfortune. Suffering. Yeah. Oh. I'd say most of it's not at your friends. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if, if okay. you feel schadenfreude towards someone, are you really a friend to them? I don't think so. Wow. That um, that opens up I, because for a long time I was under the misapprehension uh, that that word was only about like when you're friends, like you know, like I feel like your relationship with Benjamin might have made you well, have I mean, this misapprehension. Like, <laughs> with, with, with like uh, with with Marin, sometimes I would also mark Marin. I would sometimes like you know feel like that. There is I mean, definitely a ten syllable German word to describe your closest friendships. Well, I mean, I I that's you know. I, I guess I had just a lot of opportunities to feel that for friends. <laughs> and so I just assumed it, 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 it dealt with that, but um, uh, yeah. All right. That's good. I didn't realize that, but yeah. It really opens up new horizons for all of us. It does. It does. I, I gotta say if a substantial number of these ghouls uh, succumb to this disease, in the just like the most Greekly poetic way imaginable. I will go to temple. I'll go to shul. Like all those, all those hostages who constantly like stop me on the street, ask me if I'm Jewish, try to get me back. I'm back, baby. I mean, there, it had occurred to me that I'll wear the it, wig. I'll, take, I, I'll have a bunch I, of babies. The, um, you got to get some longer skirts. Yeah. Um, I did fast this year. I'm not, I mean, I fast every year and I, you know, who knows? 